Hello everyone, this is Python for MATLAB coders. I'm Arash and this is uh, session one of this course, Variables and Arrays. Today I want to talk about how we can transform a piece of MATLAB code into Python language. So here on the left, I have a uh, MATLAB ID uh, and you can see here I have a piece of code and I want to translate this code into Python language. Here on the right, I have uh, spider which is standard uh, python ide especially very useful for data science applications so here uh, i have some different lines of codes and we want to go line by line and see what would be the translation of these codes into python so let me begin by running this uh, piece of code so we can see the value of different variables here uh, so as you can see here in the first line, we are telling the code that A is equal to one. But uh, what MATLAB actually does in the background is that it assumes that uh, the, the value of this uh, variable is of the type double, which is very useful for storing um, decimal numbers, but not especially good for integers. And if I want to do the same thing in Python, it would be almost the same syntax, but uh, let me first import a very important Python package, which is very useful for uh, numerical operations and metrics uh, manipulations. Um, and this package, as you might already know, is NumPy. So we import NumPy as NP and then we uh, type the first line, which as you can see, have the same syntax. If we run this piece of code and you can you can see here that Python has implicitly assumed that the type of this uh, variable is from the type of integer. Uh, it is doing that to probably store some space in the memory and also later on the hard disk if you want to save these variables onto your hard disk. So let's move on here and go to line two. So uh, here, as you can see, we want the program to uh, make a variable. The value is equal to one of the type unsigned integer 8-bit. And we want to put this value inside the variable b. So 8-bit integers, they cannot take uh, any value higher than 255. These are very good for storing small numbers, but, but not very good for and large numbers. Uh, so if we do that, as you can see here, MATLAB has uh, assumed that this is the type of the variable that we have here. And uh, here in Python, if we want the same functionality, we just need to use NumPy package and call a uint8 function to make sure that the type of this variable is integer. So if we want to go to line three here, as you can see, we have uh, assumed that the type of this variable is from double. So if we want the same functionality in Python, we just need to use float 64 function in Python from NumPy package, which basically assumes that this number could have several decimal points. And this is very good for storing and working with uh, numbers with high decimal points, for example, and if any sort of computational or scientific calculations that they're measuring real numbers from nature. So, you know, in the nature, we don't have, you know, exact integers. There are always some sort of decimal points when you measure a quantity. So um, that would be a very important application of uh, float 64 type of variable. So let's move on. In line four, we have uh, the function round, which uh, basically rounds up or down um, the amount of value that we put inside it. So in MATLAB, we have actually the same uh, syntax as in Python, although we might all also be able to use NumPy package for this purpose, which uh, basically does the same job. So in line five, uh, we want to make a two-dimensional array here in MATLAB, which contains uh, zeros. So here, if I open this array, you can see that here we have five by five array of zeros. 
So if we want to make that sort of array in MATLAB, in Python, sorry, it would be NP that's zeros five five. So as you can see, the syntax uh, here and here is almost the same, but the only difference is that uh, here in Python, we have an extra pair of parentheses around the five and five. So um, this is, these are just assumptions that programming languages use for the interpretation of the commands that we give to them. And it does not necessarily have any um, difference in the real world. So uh, let's go to the next line. So here in line six, we want to um, do the same thing. But here, instead of zeros, we want the values to be equal to one. So uh, it would be very simple to do so in Python. We just use the function ones from NumPy package. But this time, as you can see, uh, we have an extra pair of parentheses again. So in line seven, uh, we want to uh, basically generate uh, some random numbers. So here, as you can see here, we have a five by five array of random numbers between uh, zero and one. And if we want the same functionality inside Python, we can use a NumPy package and then we go to random and then we call the function rand. Um, so here, as you can see, we do, do not have that extra pair of parentheses as we had in the past, but uh, we need to add uh, this part of the code, you know, when we want to move from MATLAB to Python. So in line eight, I want to generate some uh, integer random numbers. So I want these values to be between one and five, and then I want the size of the array to be three by three. So it would be something like this. So we have this random numbers from one to five and the size of this array is three by three. If we want the same functionality inside Python, it would be something like this. So we again go to NumPy package random and then the function that we are calling is rand int. And then we call the lower and upper bound of the random number and then the size of the array that we have in mind. So as you can see, there are some similarities between this line of the code and here's in, in Python, but there are some differences with the you know parentheses because here we have this parentheses and here we have this bracket and we need to take care of them so we do not confuse these programming languages. So in line nine, we want to make a linear array from one to five. So if I want to visualize it, it would be something like this. So we have an array, it starts from one to five. And if we want to have the same functionality in Python, uh, we need to use a um, NumPy package and then we use a range function. And as you may notice, we have gone from one to six. The reason for that is in Python, when we call a range, we do not include the last member of that range. So if I run this piece of code here on the right, you can see that we have basically the same array. That's good. So uh, let's move on to the next line. In line 10, we want to flip an array. It means that we basically want to mirror the values that we have inside an array. So in order to have the same functionality of the flip function in MATLAB, we just use, use a NumPy package and then we uh, use a function flip. It does the same job. But as you have noticed here, when we want to call one to five, again, we want to call it one to six to generate the same output. So if we want to have a look on this array, you can see that it starts from five and goes down to five. It means it has been mirrored horizontally. So we, we almost have the same thing in Python, but as you can see, it goes from bottom to top. So it's just because of some background assumption. So we have, when we have a linear array in Python, it does not consider a second dimension for it. It does have one dimensional arrays, but in MATLAB, uh, you cannot have a one dimensional array. It is always minimum two dimensions for each of the arrays that we define, but that would not be an issue. So in line 11, 
as you can see here we want to uh, uh, transpose a matrix of ones so if I look at this code as you can see the dimensions here is 3 by 4 right I mean uh, there are four rows and three columns but as you can see here we have the reverse order and it's all because of this a single code sign which does the transpose operation on any array if we want to have the same functionality um, inside Python we need to call transpose function from numpy package and it will do the same job for us so in line 12 we want to reshape an array from size 5 by 5 to the size uh, 25 by 1 and if we want to uh, have the same functionality inside python we have no choice but to call reshape function from no, uh, numpy package and then we can give the new shape of this, that array into the reshape function and it will take care of that problem for us so if i open l here you can see that there is a linear function but initially we had a two-dimensional array with the size 5 by 5 and we have changed it to 25 by 1 so that's how you do it in python so in line 13 we want to do the same thing but this time we do not want to mention the exact dimension we just uh, want the array to be to become flattened and basically becomes a linear array so if i want to have the same functionality in python uh, i can again use the reshape function but this time instead of uh, putting a specified value for the dimension if i use one and then minus one it assumes that uh, one is the first dimension and it will calculate automatically that what should be um, the other dimension that makes this linear makes uh, this array completely linear uh, so here in line 14 uh, the code that we have is to making a linear space between 1 to 10 and then we want five pieces let's see what this line of the code uh, does in MATLAB so here if I open the variable n you can see that the values are started from 1 to 10 and then we have uh, five steps and four different pieces between each two pairs of these numbers so basically it divides the space into uh, equal distance pieces so if we want to have the same functionality inside Python, uh, the code that we need is lean space from NumPy package. And as you can see, the syntax is almost the same between MATLAB and Python in this case, with the only difference that we need to add np dot at the beginning of the function. So here in line 15, I want to stack two different uh, arrays together. So here I have 1 and 2 as one array and 3, 4, 5 as another array. And I want to uh, glue these two different uh, arrays together uh, from their second dimension, as you can see here. So if I have a look at the output, you can see that 1 and 2 has been glued to 3, 4, 5, and they have become the same array. So if we want to do the same thing in Python, uh, we need to use NumPy package and concatenate function. It does the same job. So with the only difference that we need to define the axis at the end of the function. And the other thing is that in Python, we start counting uh, anything from zero and not from one. But in MATLAB, we start counting from one. And that would be one major difference that you need to take care of. So in line 16, we basically want to uh, define a variable here. And then we want to save this variable uh, on our hard disk or our current directory, as you can see here on the left side. We want to save it with the name uh, var.mat, which is the standard type of uh, MATLAB's variables when you save them on your hard drive and uh, we want the the value inside this file to be equal to 
uh, this variable p so we call it like a string here so if i run this uh, part of the code you can see that uh, this var.mat is created here so this is basically my uh, variable that has been stored on the hard disk so if i want the same functionality inside uh, python i can use uh, again numpy package and then create a random number similar to the thing i have done here and then uh, i use uh, np.save to save this variable on my hard drive so here as you can see the standard uh, format of this files would be a dot uh, npy which uh, basically is uh, numpy variables on the hard disk so but the only difference is that here we do not need to put this variable p inside a single code as we are doing here in matlab so this would be a difference between matlab and python application of this code so in uh, line 17 we want to do the reverse thing and basically load this uh, array into the memory so if we want to do that we just need to call mp.load which does the same job as in matlab and the only difference is that here the name of the file is .mat and here the name of the file is .npy and it uh, loads the variable again into the memory of your pc so in the last line here we have a try to make some struct so uh, if you're familiar with the type of struct in matlab uh, it basically is a record of variables it can store different types of variables within the same uh, global or larger variable so here if i use a dot indexing so if i go r dot and the name of a variable equal to something it will create this struct for me inside the workspace and as you can see 12 and 13 has been recorded as the values of this variables this is a very uh, simple solution if you want to uh, basically save different variables with different types and access them inside functions or any other location in your program that could help so if i want to have the same functionality inside uh, python there is a simple trick to do that so i just need to define a class sort of an empty class so after defining the class i just type pass and then if i um, say that the type of the r is from type of this class struct then i can simply type something like this like r.var1 is equal to 12 and the same for 13 so basically here we have recreated this uh, matlab functionality of having a struct variable um, inside python so if i click on the variable r you can see here that i have 12 13 and these are these have been saved under these uh, names of var1 and var2 this would be um, a very useful if you want to pass uh, many different variables into a function without making the header of the function too large so thank you very much everybody for uh, listening to this uh, presentation i hope that it will help you to uh, write some python codes uh, so if you feel interested i will make some more videos uh, on this topic so you would know how to transform your matlab codes simply into python codes thank you very much and see you in the next videos bye